What is going on guys? Bruin Steel here. Welcome back to another WWE broadcast. I'm your host Bruin Steel and this is Canadian Yorker and today we are recapping the Monday Night Raw that took place September 23rd, 2024 and Bad Blood is just around the corner in Atlanta. It is taking place um, this coming month so I can't wait for that. So Time goes by so quick because next week we actually have to do our um, Bad Blood prediction video because Bad Blood is, Bad Blood is actually next weekend. So, um, wow. so yeah, we have to do our predictions next week at some point. And yeah, time goes by pretty fast. Like I said, Bad Blood is next weekend. So I can't wait to see that as well. So uh, Canadian Yorker, how's it going tonight? Wow, it's like you said, time is running fast. The week is going by so quick. Um, you know, it's near the end of the weekend right now, and there's a lot going on. Um, I mean, I'm glad to be alive. You know, it's it's been a long day, but glad to be on here tonight talking about wrestling. All right, so let's get started. So we start off the show with Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan making their entrance to open up the show. Liv gets in the mic and explains they just took a victory lap, which is for winners. Um, none of the who are in the crowd, she said that the Lev Morgan Revenge Tour is going exactly as planned and froze to tape of the Judgment Day destroying the Terror Twins last week. She said she promised to take everything from Rhea Ripley, and that's exactly what she did. Um, she said the title's hers, Judgment Day hers, Dominic Mysterio's hers. In two weeks' time, she was about to say something until she gets interrupted by Rhea Ripley. She said Liv, Rhea Ripley said Liv can't take it easy. She said she's not going to hurt, hit her. She actually got something to tell Liv. Dom steps in the way and Rhea mocks him, leading Liv to pull him back. He asks if that Rhea isn't clear to compete and she's not letting her out of the mess. But Rhea Ripley says that she's not and she's cleared for bad blood. Um, Rhea Ripley told him that the message is for both of them since Dominic Mysterio likes to stick his nose into the women's championship business. Adam Pearce had decided that at Bad Blood, Dom will be exactly where he deserves to be, behind bars in a shark cage. Let's go. And I think you, I think you called it too last week. Why not just put Dom in the shark cage above the ring? You got your wish. Um, Dominic <laughs> is going to be locked into, into a shark uh, cage during the Rhea and Liv World Heavyweight Championship match. Um, and Rhea said she will win the title that she never lost back. And she said, and in another thing, she heads butts, and then she heads butts Liv to the mat, ending the segment, and she laughed at Liv, while Dom helps Liv up. And that's the end of the segment. And before I ask you how your thoughts, like what you're, what you think about all this, I just gotta say, this has to be the pay-per-view, right? This has to be the pay-per-view where Raquel Rodriguez comes back and help live, right? It's got to be that case. I think Raquel comes back right here at Bad Blood to help live. Um, but what are your thoughts on this? Man, there's, uh, there's a number of women out there. Let's just get set this straight. That there's a number of women out there that do have a bone to pick with Rhea Ripley. I mean, yeah, she's the baby face now of, uh, of Raw. But she has pissed off a lot of ladies, and a lot of these ladies would be more than happy to, to help Liv Morgan retain her championship at Bad Blood. And one of them being Raquel Rodriguez. And yeah, like you said, I do agree that Raquel definitely has a bone to pick with Rhea Ripley, and she definitely going to come out with a heel and, um, and assist Liv Morgan with helping her out. So Dom can't do anything because Dom's going to be behind bars and and trapped in a cage and he can't do nothing to help to help make for live morgan as he should be you know it should be woman to woman vying for the women's championship but you know you know dom you know it's funny i, I saw the, the video you know dom when after live after after uh Rhea told dom where he's gonna be dom instantly had flashbacks so when he was a child if you remember that the, the match that uh, that Rey Mysterio had with Eddie Guerrero, and they had a match with Dom to, to claim claim ownership of Dom, and 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 Rey Mysterio won that match. But man, Dominic Mysterio was just reliving that that post traumatic stress disorder that he experienced as a child. Now he's experiencing it as an adult, and uh, I mean it's it's crazy. 
you know, she's, she's just making him sweat bullets and get his hands sweaty and stuff. Um, you're going to have to see what's going to happen with that going forward. Um, but can't get to say, not going to be feeling sorry for Dominic Castillo because he's going to be in his cage when he can't, he can't do nothing but watch and see what's going to happen. So that's going to be good to see. All right. So uh, moving on to the first match of Monday Night Raw, we got Ludwig Kaiser versus Sami Zayn in a one-on-one match. Um, Zayn in control early. Um, Ludwig Kaiser, I actually thought Ludwig Kaiser was going to win with a countout. Ludwig Kaiser destroying Sami Zayn by kicking him into the steel steps, which have taken a lot of um, competitors out like within a month. Um, you know, it just went back and forth, and it seems like Ludwig Kaiser just took advantage. Um, you know, Ludwig Kaiser um, was happy to take the count up, but Zayn beats the count at like a nine and a half. It was pretty close, um, and Ludwig Kaiser was like... Um, it just he was just like oh man I thought he was gonna win the match. Um, Sami Zayn kind of counters it and tries to hit a blue thunder bomb, but um, Ludwig Kaiser blocks the blue thunder driver folding press. He tries to cheat with his foot on the rope, but the referee catches him and he gets pissed off. Um, corner exploder um, to the corner and um, German suplex cuts him off. Sami Zayn was able to take advantage and hit the Huluva kick to win the match. Sami Zayn defeats Ludwig Kaiser in the Classic. I really like this match. It was great. Um, Sami Zayn defeats Ludwig Kaiser by pitfall. Post-match, Gunther comes to ringside. He said Sami has been begging him for weeks for a title match and he's seen enough. If he really wants it more than anything else, then he sinks here and now is when he should step up and tell him no. So once again, Gunther declines um, Sami Zayn for like, I think it's the fourth time now. I actually thought Gunther was going to accept it, but no, he just doesn't want to defend the title. Um, but Sami Zayn defeats Ludwig Kaiser by pitfall. What are your thoughts of this match? And what are your thoughts on Gunther once again um, declining um, Sami's challenge? Well, let's just first get up to Ludwig Kaiser and you know him facing off against Sami Zayn. I, I see that Ludwig Kaiser could definitely be a great champion one day. Um, you know, he definitely he's he's trained with he's trained with the best. He's trained with Gunther, so he knows what it is to accept. You know, to be the best uh, that he could be, and you know, he could definitely be a great contender for a championship for a champion uh, championship one day. Um, you know, because he's been with Kaiser. I think he's been with Gunther the longest ever since both of them came to the WWE. They've been with them the longest. So he knows Gunther. And, um, you know, that makes him interesting as a character. And I think um, I think uh, we're, we're, he's probably one of the more underrated wrestlers today. You know, he almost, he, he would have, he should have won against uh, Sami Zayn, but... Sammy, you know, pulled out a win, out, you know, and and, and with Gunther, Gunther, and with Gunther getting, getting uh, declining Sammy Zayn for the fourth time now, what is the reason? I mean, he, we know he doesn't want to face Sammy Zayn because I, I, one of the reasons I think it is because he doesn't want to lose his championship to Sammy Zayn. He knows Sammy Zayn is a dangerous wrestler for him, um, but at the same time. I know full well that Gunther is 100% possible, uh, uh, 100% equipped. He has all the tools to beat Sami Zayn. He can do it. It's just that he's not willing to go ahead and do it because he doesn't want to lose his championship. So I just uh, I don't understand. I, I'm still kind of puzzled by why Gunther keeps on declining Sami Zayn's challenge. Uh, he's, is he waiting for a better challenger to come along? Uh, what's what's the reason here? Um, Something's gonna make him tick to make him. Sammy, Sammy has to do something to make him tick to absolutely want him to, to come to to get the challenge to to, to 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 accept his challenge. So I don't know what that's gonna be. All right. So uh, moving on. Um, before we get into the next match, I do want to mention something. Um, for the second week in a row, we see Dragonoff coming across Judgment Day. So Judgment Day and Dragonoff being. Uh, we see Dragonoff and Judgment Day having some segments, and people are like, "Oh, is Dragonoff gonna de 
if are we going to see a Dragunov feud with the Judgment Day? Oh man. <laughs> so, um, but we have to see what happens. Um, we could possibly see, you know, we've seen how close maybe Jay and Dragunov have become. You know, what if we see Dragunov be part of Jay, Rhea, and Damien? That'll be hell of a group right there. If Dragunov has starts having a beef. Um, with Judgment Day, then just starts joining Rhea and Damien. That would be cool to see. Jay, Dragunov, Damien, and Rhea. But we have to see what happens. Um, what do you think of that? Dragunov possibly maybe starting a feud with Judgment Day and joining Damien, Rhea, and Jay. I think that's an interesting uh, angle. You think that could I think, happen? Yeah, I definitely think it can happen because I believe Dragunov definitely knows about the Judgment Day. Uh, he knows who they are. He knows what they're capable of. So, especially the new Judgment Day, and um, I believe definitely, um, you know, he could definitely be a good uh, additional piece to help Damien, Rhea, Jay, and D fighting against the Judgment Day. So it's definitely what they need. All right. So moving on to the next match, we got Carlito going one on one with the man he betrayed, Dragon Lee, one on one. Um, so Leah out held the gaze, drop kick sends Carlito to the floor. Um, Dragon gets him down in the corner, hesitated, drop kick connects. Uh, JD McDonough runs interference and it turns into a brawl between the stables on the floor. Um, until Rey Mysterio takes out Dominic Mysterio. Carlito with the scoreboard for two, but boot up in the corner, sidesteps. Dragon Lee with the Operation Dragon to win the match. Dragon Lee defeats Carlito with the help of LWO and Rey Mysterio. So... Um, Dragon Lee gets one um, against Carlito. Dragon Lee defeats Carlito by pitfall. What are your thoughts on Dragon Lee's win? Great pickup win for Dragon Lee. Great revenge win for Dragon Lee against Carlito because I think it's been months. We haven't we haven't really discussed it much, but it's been going on for months. Dragon Carlito. Every time Carlito faces Dragon Lee, Carlito gets the win somehow over Dragon Lee. And we have not been discussing that, but that's another that's another great storyline right there. Carlito betrayed Dragon Lee and attacked Dragon Lee. Honestly, that that story has been buried for some time, and it'd be great to see it get pushed more because it's been buried by the other bigger stories going on. Um, but Dragon Lee definitely needs a win against Carlito and the Judgment Day for what they did to him, you know, and um, and I think Dragon Lee would also be another great asset for, along with the LWO, who would be another great asset for the Terror Twins, Jey Uso, Dragon Lee possibly to also help out against Judgment Day. So that's what I got to say about that. All right, so moving on. So we were supposed to get a match between Bronson Reed and The Miz, but it never happened because once again, these two monsters can't keep their cool. Once again, while Bronson Reed was making his entrance, um, Braun Strowman attacks Bronson Reed before his entrance. Braun chokes him into the apron. The Miz confronts Strowman and Reed, um, and Reed dives on the both of them. Security swarms the ring to break it up. Neither man will be held back. Um, Braun Strowman kind of tried to go up to the top rope, but Bronson Reed got distracted, but... He was able to find out, see Braun Strowman trying to um, jump on them. So he just said, I'm out of here and just went back and into brawl. Um, so this Miz and um, Bronson Reed match goes to a no contest, I guess, presumably. So, um, yeah, so it's intense between Braun Strowman and um, Bronson Reed. And later on, Adam Pearce announced that he's sick of it. Um, a normal match can't figured a normal match can't be resolved between these two monsters and he said that he's announced that next week on Monday Night Raw it's going to be Braun Strowman versus Bronson Reed in a last monster standing match which I believe is the last man standing match they're going to do between um, Bronson Reed and Braun Strowman so um, yeah so no really any matches to talk about but Braun Strowman and Bronson Reed will settle their difference in a last man standing match. This has to be a last man standing match. They just say last monster standing. So, um, but what are your thoughts on this whole Braun Strowman and Bronson Reed situation? I think it would be great to see uh, them get someone. Someone needs to get a win. They've been 
ending a lot of the matches they've been they've been doing have been ending in ties and brawls, and so uh, yeah, it makes sense that there needs to be an end to this feud, or probably we could see more of this feud continuing going forward into the future because. Uh, Bronson Reed and Braun Storman have no love lost for each other. Bronson Reed's been trying to take it out everybody left and right, but he got taken out by COVID for a week. So he was out of action for a week. We, and everybody had a break from it. But then he comes back. He's still going to continue his rampage um, going forward. But the big the big bad monster that he has to get through is Braun Storman. Once he's through with Braun Storman, there's no one else that's going to be standing in his way, man. I mean, Jey Uso is a target. Who else is a target? We have uh, uh, Gunther is also a target himself. But, um, man, there's a lot of people that, that are going to be targets for Bronson Reed after he takes care of Braun Strowman. Yeah. All right. So, moving on, we got Drew McIntyre making his entrance and gets on the mic. He said he repeats CM Punk's promise to make him bleed and that we will have to kill him. And it's rhetorical about that being the end of the both of them. Um, he's been singing about those words. He said he meant every single word. He said he always told the truth, but usually he keeps the personal stuff to himself. And he talks about how their wives begged them not to do this Hell in a Cell match. He talks about how his family has also begged him not to do his match. But none of that matters and that this match is going to happen at Bad Blood. Um, he promised to make Punk bleed a lot. That he's going to suffer more pain than he felt in his entire existence. It's appropriate CM Punk compares him to the devil because it's good versus evil. And he, uh, excuse me, Drew has broken so easily in the past and will break CM Punk permanently inside Hell in the Cell. So a short little segment by Drew pretty much. I actually thought CM Punk was going to come out and brawl with him. <laughs> but um, I guess they're just going to save that for Hell in the Cell maybe. Um, but we'll see. Maybe they'll brawl next week on the last Raw before um, Bad Blood. They probably just rip each other apart before Hell in the Cell even starts. Like, yeah, let's get Hell in the Cell started on Raw next week. <laughs> so, um, but we have to see what happens. Uh, but what are your thoughts on this Drew McIntyre um, segment? You know, maybe, um, you know, maybe Drew, this is a great, this is a great end to a feud right here. Um, it's been a great feud between Drew McIntyre and um, CM Punk. Both of them have no love lost for each other. And I'm sure once they come out of it, they'll probably have more respect for each other more than they hate each other. A lot of respect will probably come out of it because both of them will probably have beaten themselves bloody, you know, just beaten as much as they can into each other as they can before they finally realize, okay, this guy is definitely, you know, he's beaten me. I've beaten him. And, you know, maybe we'll see some sort of respect between the both of them um, that, you know, they're not going to, uh, uh, that's a word, uh, they're not going to reconcile. But there's going to be some sort of mutual respect that they have. Um, I honestly don't know what's going to happen um, between now and, and next week. But... Probably we will, we will see another, a third, like, brawl between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre coming forward. Um, so there's a lot of things that's going to be going on between now and Bad Blood. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, they, they don't like each other. But this is, this is what made, this is what has made the storyline so great between Drew McIntyre and CM Punk for the past year. And, um, you know, it's been really amazing it's been an amazing storyline an amazing time all right so moving on um to the next match we got damage control eo sky and kari same versus unholy union elba fire and isla dawn in a tag team match so i just want to talk about something real quick i try not to talk a lot about this but um yeah it's really weird because before the match bianca and jade Rolls up on Damon Control and congratulates Eo Sky on her performance. And Sky said next time she's coming for the tag team titles. Um, Jade says she's better understand they're not putting hands on those tag team titles. They're just like, look, let me get this one straight. It's clear. Let's get this clear. Damon Control are a babyface group, but in this segment between Damon Control and Bianca and Jade, it just looks like 
one team is not a baby face. It looks like one team might be a heel, one team might be a maybe a tweener. Um, but I can probably see Bianca and Jade maybe turning like heel or something. I don't know, but Damage Control, they just look like a tweener or a heel group. So I don't know. It's they're still baby face, so um, but before we talk about this match, any thoughts or like, like I said, I just don't know. I've been take, I've been, we've been going back and forth about this, but we have been talking about damage control. Yes, they are so quote unquote a face baby face group, but, but they're just like these promos that they do, like they just don't look like a baby face faction. Look at look <laughs> at look don't. at look at Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. They're baby faces, but they still do promos in the backstage segment. They look like they're heels. Yes, they do. They need to change. Obviously, they have to do something to change the way they look or something. I don't know. But here's the thing with Damage Control. Um, Damage Control was, was one of the top heel groups before they had their downfall, before they lost Bailey. They were at the at the apex of their of their heel as as, as their career. They had Bailey, you know, they had Asuka, but now they're only down to two. They have EO and they have and they have uh uh and 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 and, and Kylie Sane. So honestly, they're not the same as the way the, before. And now they're a babyface group. They just switched from heel to babyface. Absolutely nothing happened. And and Eo Sky was going crazy, absolutely crazy after she lost the the tag team titles. After she lost the World Heavyweight Championship, she was going crazy. She 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 couldn't handle it. Things had to change. We didn't know how that was happening. But there was no really real transition for that. And now they're seen as like they're, they're, they're like an in-between type of group. People are loving them now. So it's kind of tough to say. But I, even even after they got they got attacked by by uh, uh, the three, the three of them, um, you know, those those were heels. Um, but, you know, it just seems like, well, they definitely have to work more on their image. Damage, maybe it's damage control that needs to change themselves that need to change because, you know, they're, they're still seeing, we still see them as a, as a heel sort of group, but they need to change the way they look or they have to change their, they, they got to change something. Um, you know, they got to do something to, you know, change themselves. Um, Bianca and Jade are definitely still the baby faces here um, in my my experience in my in my in my own way um so they're, they're the dominant tag team champions um i mean we know where alba's fine to slow down on but dams control they got to do something to shake shake things up all right so talking about this match between damage control eo sky kari sane versus the unholy union of a fire is the dawn um this was a great match it went back and forth and um, Unholy Union, being the heel group they are, targeted um, Kyrie Sane's injured eyes. So it was um, back and forth, and then it was Dawn who attacks her injured eye. Later on, it's love with the near fall. Elba started grinding her knuckles into Kyrie's injured eye. Ooh. Um, so they're targeting Kyrie Sane's eye. Rigging over, she tags Sky in, wrecking ball, drop kicks, corner knee, cover for two. Some interference gets in a deep fall for. Elba fire. The match breaks down. Diving elbow to the floor. Eel Sky off to the top. Eel Sky performing a diving moonsault on Isla Dawn to win the match. Damage Control defeats Unholy Union by pitfall. Um, big pickup win. Um, and this is how Damage Control is right now. And they are a baby face group. Um, there are people cheering them and booing Unholy Union. Um, they're cheer they were cheering Damage Control as well. Um, but they just need to work on being a baby face in the backstage. So, um, so basically, yeah, Damage Control with a huge win over the Unholy Union. Does this mean that maybe we're going to see Damage Control versus Bianca and Jade for the tag team titles maybe in the future now since Damage Control defeated Unholy Union? We just have to see what happens next week. Maybe they'll add it to Bad Blood or we might just see it next week. Maybe they haven't announced it, but... We have to see what happens, but what are your thoughts on Damage Control defeating Unholy Union? I think it's a big win for Damage Control. Like we say, uh, I think Damage Control definitely has more 
more more more credence i give i'm gonna say they have more credence to they have more of a reason to get the tag team titles because damage control definitely defended the titles more than they than unholy union did unholy union only defend defended their titles about twice uh, but they did get a win they did get a get a, a couple of wins and one they got they got wins uh, but but Dam control definitely got more wins because they're definitely better as the tag team champions and, and as tag team partners um I would say damage control is the better team that to face Bianca and Jade for the tag team titles um because they know how to win and um ever they did win unfairly but they won anyway um but I think definitely uh as a face group that people are loving them and that's great and it's good to see. So we have to see what's going to happen with them going forward. And it would suck to see Unholy Union get involved because they want to get their tag team titles back. They're going to, they're definitely going to get, they're definitely going to throw themselves in the mix and try to interfere in the match at Bad Blood some way. I just get the feeling that's going to happen. They're going to cost one of these two teams the chance to get the titles or retain or to, you know, they're going to, it's going to happen. So, uh, I, I, definitely would, I would like to see a fatal four-way match. I would like to see Jaden Bianca versus Damian Control versus the Pure Fusion versus um the Unholy Union. That'd be a hell of a fatal four-way. Yeah, it would be. It would definitely be. A, 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 right, a, yeah. a, here's a, here's a, another thing I want to point out. Um, if it is a fatal four-way, we would not want to see a repeat of what happened um, at King of the Ring. Where uh, I think where 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 Bianca and Jay were defending with the Clash defending the, the titles, Clash in the Castle, right? They were at Clash in the Castle. It, it you don't want to see a repeat of what happened at Clash in the Castle at Bad Blood because it seems like if they're there, they could lose their titles again because you know they could lose to any one of those other uh, uh, people. Not gonna, it's still not announced if the tag team titles are going to be defended at Bad Blood. It hasn't been official yet. So we'll have to see what's going to happen. All right, so, all right, we're almost there. Moving on to the next match. We got a tag team match between the Creed brothers, Brutus and Julius Creed versus the New Day, Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. Um, this was hell of a tag team match. I really enjoyed it. Um, but Chad Gable runs interference, um, like, I think twice in this match. First one was... Uh, um, earlier and the referee didn't miss the tags trapping Xavier in the ring skirt and putting the boot to him and then at the end it was um, I think Kofi or was it Xavier Xavier went up top and then that's when Gable runs interference um, and Xavier was definitely lost it um, yeah he's definitely turning heel soon um, he couldn't compose his anger and he starts to beat up K Gable excuse yeah Gable excuse me yes he did beat up Gable and um, Kofi got taken out, and um, big knee from Julius. Dunk a dive from Kofi, pounds, power, bond lift, blind tag. Um, Brutus ball on Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods just, just couldn't, um, you know, get his click, couldn't control his emotions, got distracted, um, and he paid the price with the Creed brothers hitting the Brutus ball on him. The Creed brothers defeat the New Day by pitfall. Um, and that's pretty much it. Wow. Um, so Xavier Woods is not looking good for the New Day. Um, so what are your thoughts on the Kree brothers defeating the New Day? Wow, it is after what happened last week. Um, with the with they're so close, they were close to winning the tag team titles on Judgment Day because of what happened last week. You can only I can only you can only imagine the amount of frustration Xavier Woods is feeling after this match, and him and Kofi are not on sync as a team. And you know, there's just so much going on. Big E is not there. They just, they just, they just falling apart at the seams. It's just a unfortunate, weird loss for them. Um, but for American-made Julius Creed and 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 uh, Chad Gable, you know, it's a great pickup win for them because you know they're they they're one step closer to getting tag team titles. And you know, they now that here's what, here's what I see now. Now that you have you have uh, this new Judgment Day. Um, and uh, I think that American Made, the, the Creed brothers can definitely get the tag team titles now because Damian Priest and, and 
Damian Priest is no longer there. And, uh, you know, because Damian Priest and, and, and uh, you know, and, and his partner were the tag team champions before. But here's the thing, though. Now that they're there, um, they could definitely take the titles off of Judgment Day, which would be, I hope that would be, that would be quite a, an upset for them. If they get the win, that would be very interesting um, for them to become the champions. And I would, I would actually like to see that happen. So, all right. So we are finally at the main event. We got a singles match for the Intercontinental Championship. Braun Breaker defending the Intercontinental Championship against Jey Uso. Main event, Jey Uso. Um, this was an unbelievable match. It went back and forth. Um, I'm not going to lie. Everyone expected Braun Breaker to win. Um, it was a great match. It was great. Braun Breaker um, you know, bouncing Jey off the death a few times. Bulldog off the apron and into the now table. Um, and then it just was Jey Uso had a Samoan drop. Got a pitfall for his own. Avalanche Frankensteiner, but Uso kicks out. They were trading punches. Uh, wrong stalking military press power stands so close. Um, Joe goes, uh, Jay goes up top, tries to go for a diving slash. Braun breaks, kicks out. Um, so once again, the spear countered with a super kick. Spear through the uh, barricades. So, and, but inside, it gets second spear by Jay Uso. And Uso goes on top. Jay Uso hits the diving splash. And there you have it, guys. Jay Uso did it. Oh my god, I was shocked. Jay Uso with a huge win and his first WWE title in his singles career. His singles his first singles title um in WWE. Main event Jay Uso defeats Braun Breaker to defeat uh excuse me. Main event Jay Uso defeats Braun Breaker by pitfall with a diving splash to win the Intercontinental Championship, his first singles title in WWE. Congratulations to main event Jey Uso. Yeet. Um, so that yeah, will do it, guys. Um, but question is, how long is he going to last with the title? I mean, the whole bloodline situation, you know, the whole bloodline story. Um, but just, I just feel like Braun Breaker is going to do what he did. I think I feel like Braun Breaker is going to do to Jay what he did to Sammy. Just lose, just just lose the championship once and then win it back. I just feel like they're gonna do Braun Breaker versus Jey Uso at Bad Blood, and then Braun's probably gonna win it back. We have to see what happens. So, um, but what are your thoughts on Jey Uso winning the Intercontinental Championship in his first singles um, championship? I know you've been talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's finally time. Thank goodness. It is um, just so happy for Jey Uso, man. Seriously worked his butt off. He lost how many matches now? Singles matches now? Was it six? Six matches. Six title. Six title contenders matches. And if he lost this one, it would make it a seventh. And there were people online saying that, well, if Jay Uso, Jay Uso has the power now. Jay Uso is no longer under the shadow of the bloodline. He's no longer under the shadow of Roman Reigns. He has won a championship, something his brother Solo Sokoa could never do. And, you know, now he doesn't need his family. You know, he's proven to he's proven to Roman. He's proven to to his brothers that that he that they, he could be successful on, on his own. He doesn't they need him more than he needs them. And um, you know, that's just something that was has been said in some online circles. Uh, but I'm happy for Jay Uso, man. He's been working his butt off. Um, he's been tag team titles champion for a long time, but now he's a singles champion, and that's great to see. It's a great step forward for him to become the intercontinental chi- intercontinental champion. And he's got to have a few runs in his belt. LA Knight, man, LA Knight has been working his butt off as well to become. To, he he finally became the United States champion, and now, you know, he is working his butt off defending his title against people. And you know it's it, it would it would be too soon for 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 Jay Uso to lose his title immediately after he just won his title. And not only that, Jay Uso is also one of the uh, I've heard that he is also one of the highest selling people in WWE right now. So it's great to see that he's got a championship, you know, by himself, you know, through his hard work and, and effort. And that's great. So it's great to see. Um, you know, for it, for it, LA Knight, the same man. LA Knight, 
definitely deserves that U.S. championship. So let's see him defend his title a few times. I want to see Jey Uso defend his title a few times. I don't see Braun Breaker taking the title off of Jey Uso um, just yet because, you know, he just won the title from him, and it's a great win for, for Jay. So happy for Jay. Jay, just, just, Jay. Jay now doesn't need to involve himself in the bloodline business right now, you know, maybe later on this year. But right now, he does not need that right now. He needs to just focus on defending his title and being the best champion that he can be. All right, so that would do it, guys, for Monday Night Raw. Congratulations to main event Jay Uso once again. Um, we got a new Intercontinental Championship uh, champion. Excuse me. We got a new Intercontinental Champion. Um, but in terms of grading, um, this was a great show. I absolutely loved it. Um, so I'm gonna give this show a plain A. So in between an A minus and A plus, I'm giving this show an A. How about you? I'm going to give it an A as well. It's a great show. Great ending to the show. It's lovely. Amazing. Um, you know, can't wait to see what's going to happen going yeah, forward. Let's see, let's see, let's see if Jay, let's see if Rhea Ripley actually went to Waffle House with Jey Uso. Now he's a champion. <laughs> so. so let's see, let's see Rhea Ripley win her title. So then you have Rhea Ripley and Jey Uso, a power couple right there, you know, being champions, championship team. Yeah. All right, so that would do it, guys. Thank you guys for watching this broadcast. My name is Bruin Steele. This is Canadian Yorker. Be sure to check out Canadian Yorker's YouTube channel. The link will be in the description of this video, as well as their wrestling channel, which is WWE Wrestling Bros. The link will also be in the description of this video as well. Um, but that would do it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoy. We got one more Monday Night Raw next week until we got Bad Blood, which is next Saturday, I believe. So it's going to be great, man. Um, but anyways, my name is Bruin Steel, this Canadian Yorker. We will see you guys in the next broadcast. Take it easy, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. See you guys later.